Welcome back to the greenhouse today, everybody. We are experimenting with a 100% solar powered space heater and seedling starter. This is an experiment that I had on the back burner for years and I've experimented with it over the years, but I put a larger heater in this little solar powered experiment. You can see the little black radiator. I'm gonna pull this little greenhouse inside my greenhouse up and show everybody what I'm talking about. Now, if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing. Let's jump right into this. So first things first, I wanna show everybody what we're working with here. We've got this little heat exchanger. This is like a transmission or oil cooler. It's about $20 online. And I've got these two fans, some hoses, an old pickle jar. And let's try and zoom in here. You can see that heating element in there is full of bubbles. Zoom back out. We've got our little low decibel water pump there and on switch for it. On switch controls the fans. The motor speed controller in that box there controls the water pump itself. Now we've got a 100 watt solar panel outside hooked directly to the 100 watt 12 volt heating element. So this is a larger heating element. This one costs about 30 to $35. And then we've got some cheaper heating elements that are, man, these are probably only like 10 to $12. These are super cheap, but they do last and they do work. This one inside is about the medium size. I showed small and large, that's medium. And this one is working very, very well. 129, 130, 128, 125, so all around the jar we're sitting about 125 to 130 degrees and that is awesome we're using this heat exchanger inside this small tunnel now this is all wrapped up at the back because these tunnels will extend down as we clean everything out of the greenhouse we've got tons and tons of work to do but i wanted to start this little area so i could get some cold weather crops growing we've got tons of little onions we've got more onions over here some little lettuces sprouting up here, uh, heading collards, mustard greens, just a bunch of cold hardy stuff that I wanted to get a jump start on. As we're in September here, it's been kind of a rough week or two here on free speech in America. So I've been kind of radio silent and just working in silence. But here we are getting all of this situated just want to show the back side so this is all the wiring everything's hooked together we've got a negative we've got a positive we've got a 25 amp fuse and this would be where our power comes in i'd like to clean this up with connectors that way i don't have to worry about them touching each other but that is where it comes in to power our heating element so let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on and then i want to talk about everything involved because we are not just using regular water in here just to show we're still sitting about 129 almost 130 right there we've got a separate 12 volt system solar powered with a large battery to power these fans putting out some decent airflow in this little box here or in this little greenhouse we built inside our greenhouse. Now we go ahead and we kick this on. You can see the light glow and all of the waters will start to exchange here. So we're blowing water down into our tank. It's being pumped, flown through the system. And that is how it works. It's blowing some about 120 degrees off at me right now. It is definitely working well. So we've already cooled to about an average of 106 blowing out of here, up and down a little bit. So we can see the water is flowing through this top tube. It drops right in and then this larger tube that goes to the bottom is sucking it back up. So everything is getting swirled right around that heating element that is full of bubbles. And then we've got our pump. I just want to give a rundown on how this thing's rolling here. Pushing all of the heat up through all the coils and the heat exchanger system and we're able to pull it right off. And as this heats up and we go into the nighttime, these fans and the pump don't really draw as much 
as you would think. We're sitting about 30 watts, I believe, of draw. So we can run off of our battery bank back here, large battery. We can run that even after the sun goes down and the heat stops going to the element. So we're still putting some decent heat up inside our little greenhouse, inside the greenhouse here to hold a little bit more heat. And it has worked quite well. You can see, so these were the first crops we planted about a week ago. These ones are about a week ago also. And then the lettuce was a couple days ago. So there's a good cluster of bunching onions or whatever we planted. I think it was all bunching onions because they grow really well and they do well in the cold. I'm physically starting to sweat as this heat's blowing on me and it's not too hot, but it is pretty darn warm. So we've successfully created a space heater 100% off of solar power. And now I want to talk about what we used and how much fluid we have in here. But before we jump into that, let's uh, check all this out. So this will all be for an unboxing, I suppose, even though I already unboxed it. We've got a bunch of little pumps, lots of new wiring for solar panels because some of them have been kind of chewed up, new solar controllers, and we've got a bunch of little fans, lots of little goodies that showed up. Plus we got ourselves four more solar panels. We've got four solar panels plus all of the solar power we've got. So going from the five panels we had, the 500 watts or so, we can be pushing almost 900 watts per hour as the sun is shining. So it's not always, it's not 100%, but 900 watts for however many hours a day is a lot of energy. This little microphone's weighing my shirt down. Yeah, I'm definitely sweating in here now. It was about 50 degrees this morning. My son, I'm trying to get this set up. My son has some banana nut bread baking down in our stove. So I can feel the cool breeze blowing in, but even with both doors open and windows open, we are still getting a lot of heat into the greenhouse that is not really able to escape. It's not able to be dissipated as fast because it's constantly coming in. And this little thing really got me sweating. It was blowing hundred plus degrees right in my face for the last five minutes here. So as you can see, we've got a lot of cleanup to do and just turning the camera here, looking at our little aquaponics bin, all of these goldfish are going to go down into a hundred gallon tank in our basement. And we're going to run aquaponics and hydroponics with them in the winter time. And we've got a bunch of water cress up here and this dang tomato. I stuck this broken tomato in here and it just went nuts. It's got viable tomatoes on it. And the fish actually like the cover of having that tomato there. Some red vein sorrel, some elderberries. We've got lots of watercress popping up. Strawberry there. We're going to take all this watercress as we develop our pond down there. But that is for another video. Let's get into this one here. Sitting in front of my space heater here. At first thought, I've had a lot of comments, hey, use sand with your heating elements. And I've experimented. I put sand and water in mason jars with those two little 100 watt heaters, the little red cable ones, the cheap ones to experiment. And it worked a lot better with water because it didn't heat the outside of the sand. The sand has so many air gaps in it that it wasn't allowing good transfer of heat. The water actually heated up more efficiently even though it has five times the thermal mass and it takes longer to heat water, it worked better. All those air gaps, it has poor heat transfer. Even though you can put more heat energy into sand than you can water because water will evaporate and boil at some point, sand loses the heat five times faster than water also. So it might heat up a lot and then it releases it just as fast as it heated up. So this water, and this is not just water, we've got vegetable glycerin and this stuff is almost like uh, jello. I would describe it as jello before it fully solidifies. So it's like a warm honey or molasses. It's very thick. Now what we did, was took one gallon of water and then we mixed slightly over five cups of vegetable glycerin into the water and we shook it all up really, really well, mixed it and it mixes and is a fluid and becomes 
what we wanted was 33% glycerin to 66% water. And that gives us a freezing temp. And this is an antifreeze. This will be negative 40 C, negative 40 F below. And I've read where it could be up to negative 46 degrees Fahrenheit that this will actually refreeze. Glycerin itself technically freezes between like 60 and 70 degrees, which it doesn't actually freeze. It just becomes more solid state. And like I said, it's like molasses. It's like a fluid that is a very slow moving fluid. So through a water heating calculator that I've found online, which are very valuable and they've taught me quite a bit. I've look, been looking at it for a couple years now. I wanna do a video where I show all of the heating elements put up against a time. So if you've got one gallon of water and you've got a hundred watts of energy going into it, it's going to take about an hour and a half to get from 50 degrees to 125 degrees, an hour and a half, which is extended period of time. That's a good portion of the morning, just heating the element up while it's still running and blowing. I can hear my fish jumping back there. While it's still blowing and pulling the heat off. So it heats up slower when we're actually using the system. That's why this morning I came out and I just let the heating element heat up without the system on to draw, to show what kind of energy we're actually putting into this. And you might ask what efficiency, the heating element runs at 100% efficiency, where 100% of energy is going into heat, no heat loss, it's all going right into it. So we're at 99, 100% heating efficiency with this heating element here. So we've used about half of a gallon, little, little less than half a gallon, I would say, but I'll use half a gallon for measurement. So we'd be sitting about 45 minutes to go from 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which the greenhouse doesn't really get below that even in winter with all of our heating systems. So, so starting at 50, going to 125, 130, we're at about 40, 45 minutes, maybe 47 minutes. So that is pretty darn good numbers. And that is a pretty efficient space heater as long as you've got some solar energy to operate. So this is a closed system technically. There is no purge. There's nowhere for excess pressure to go. The fittings are all pretty tight. The hoses fit right in that lid. I tried to get it as sealed as I possibly could. So I really don't ever build closed systems. Even with my compost heater, you will see the water openly pouring back into the tank and then being pulled back out from a pump. This system is closed. So with a closed system, I had to use some type of heavy fluid, a DIY coolant and antifreeze. And this vegetable glycerin is 100% non-toxic. So even if I do have a freeze up for some freak accident, which, I don't ever see this freezing up. I don't think it's ever going to get anywhere near those temperatures, but just for the sake of having peace of mind on this, I did not want it to break. So I used this vegetable glycerin, like I said, 33% glycerin, 66% water. It mixed 100% fluid and it moves just like water. You can't tell that it is a different mixture other than water. It's just like a heavy water that allows for no freezing. And the specific heat of the vegetable glycerin and water mix is anywhere from 3.8 to 4.0. So we are not losing very much at all on the heat holding capacity of the fluid itself. I got a bird down there chirping. He's sitting over there waiting for us to throw the scraps of bread out. He knows we're cooking down there, he can smell it. So I also have rice bran oil. I was going to build a solar heating box. Not sure, I may still do that, but I thought about using it in this system here, but the specific heat is 2.8 and that is much lower. It takes a lot less to heat it up, but it dissipates so much faster. So I wanted that heavy heating fluid with a high specific heat to flow through this system to be able to transfer and continue heating up while into the night, it will still hold that heat for a great deal of time, basically until the system shuts off from lack of energy. So before I go grab my son's banana bread out of the oven and start eating it without him, cause he's probably out shooting his BB gun or something. We've got this 300 watt heating element. Now this is a big boy. This thing will put out some serious heat now I'm looking for a tank. I may just drill out this old propane tank I have back here because I had a 100 watt heater in it and it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And then upon plugging all of the numbers into the heating calculator, it would take almost eight hours for that little heater to raise the temperature like 20 to 25 degrees from 50. So 
I need more energy and I got all those solar panels and I've got all the connectors to run all of those solar panels together so I can run 300 watts directly to this heating element and then I just want to keep experimenting to see what I can achieve for a nice thermal mass and possibly even bury that sucker underneath sand so it's still residually heating the sand and giving off heat throughout the entire night. I've got a lot of ideas, but I also have a lot of work to do. So that will be a little bit later on once winter's almost here. We're waiting for our wood chip delivery to get our Jean Pan compost heater ready to rock and roll for the next winter here. And I've got to get all of my beds planted. There'll be a bunch of videos coming for everybody to binge on throughout the winter when there's nothing to do. So let's go check on the bread we've got cooking. Oh man, I wish you guys could smell that. Coming down to this end of the greenhouse, it smells like banana nut bread. We've got our lavender here. Massive lavender bush. Big old bumblebee. Go ahead and check out the stove or our little oven here. So I already poked it earlier. Oh yeah, that bread's done. Ah, oh, you would think I would have tools out here that would like oven mitts. I go get my boy so we can eat this together. He's been waiting for it to be done. It took a little longer than normal because his fire wasn't as hot. I let him do it himself, get the fire rolling and then make the bread and put it in the oven. So he's learning how to cook on his own. Man, I'm sweating now. It's probably only like 60 degrees outside, but I am just sweating. The inside of the greenhouse holds the heat. I can feel the nice cool breeze from the door here. Whew, man, this little solar powered heater is doing its job. I'm gonna close this tunnel back down and then get back to work. So with that, I will let you guys go. And thank you very much for checking this one out. Any questions, ideas, comments, drop them to me in the comment section below. And with that, stay blessed. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I will see you guys in the next video.